Greetings, everyone. Hey, how you doing? It's Matt Sella, and today we are doing a season one, episode one review for the new animated series, The Owl House, produced by Disney. And before we begin, uh, I do apologize. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather here, so if I sound extra nasally, that's probably why. Anywho, without further ado, allow me to introduce my co-host this time, who I'm transmitting via satellite radio through the veil between the human world and the magical world of the Boiling Isles. It's Mark. How you doing out there? Apparently reception doesn't really matter at this point. I can hear you clearly, right? Whoo! Likes the show. I do. That was an owl joke. I think I got it. I got the joke. Anyway, it's good to have you, Mark, and uh, excited to talk about this uh, first episode with you. Yeah, no, very excited, Matt. You know, we're, as far as Disney content goes, we're sort of, you know, in the lull between DuckTales and Mandalorian, and Owl House uh, seems to have stepped up to the plate without uh, tipping my hand too early, I'd say. That's right, that's right. So, without further ado, uh, Mark, why don't you uh, give the fine folks the basic summary of this first episode of this new series? Well, Matt, we're following the tale of a young girl named Luz, who uh, finds herself magically transported to the Boiling Isles while be about to be sent away to a camp to be less creative, more in the box. Reality check. Reality check camp. Thank you. That, the brochure for that was great. <laughs> I don't doubt that's a real thing. Um, and uh, she finds herself trapped in the magical world of the Boiling Isles, Ida the Owl Lady, and a demon warrior named King. And together, go on a quest to retrieve the crown of King so that he can regain his power from the clutches of the Warden of the Land. And that is generally the plot for the first episode. Yeah, I don't want to get to spoilers right away, but spoilers. Normally, when we do episodic reviews of TV shows, it tends to be a little bit of spoilers, so uh, keep that in mind, folks. But we'll try to refrain from that. So, uh, I guess I'll start out with my opinions first. I really enjoyed the first episode. I think it has a very cool art style going going on for itself a lot of reds a little bit of hues of blue but it's mostly kind of like a bright maroon tone and i actually really dig the character designs at least for loose uh, i think she looks adorable charming in an interesting way and i kind of like her character like yeah the whole idea is that she's supposed to be kind of an outcast or a weirdo she loves to like tell her own stories and like look up fantasy settings that don't quite mesh with the real world. And so when she stumbles upon the Boiling Isles and this owl witch, she's like transported into her own fantasy world where she can try to be herself. So I think that really carries on well in this first episode and a lot of the other characters too are just as charming i would think like i was especially happy that the owl witch the albino zombie like lady is voiced by one of my favorite voice actresses wendy malik who i mostly recognized her as the wife from emperor's new groove and i just really dig her mature sassy tone and i thought she brought a lot to this episode absolutely and uh while we're on the topic of voice actors uh alex hirsch creator of gravity falls is the voice of King in this series, so that's a bit of a fun fan for those of you Disney Channel animation fans out there. And that's a good snippet, too. I actually really dug the Cubone Hellhound King character. He does give off such a Cubone vibe, which is great, because I love Cubone. I know, and I like the little Hellhound look, too. I mean, not to bury the lead right away, but I do kind of like that his crown was just essentially a Burger King kid's <laughs> meal crown from our world. It's all just a power trip to him. But yeah, I think some of those my general positives here i thought the story was it's very simple for its fantastical approach but i think it's easily digestible charming characters really all around and those would generally be my positives to conclude like i said the animation is pretty good considering for television animation it's kind of like gravity falls was it mark it has that quality to it but also has that consistent quality of ducktales the reboot so it, it there didn't feel like any cheap moments, visually speaking, in this episode. No, it feels like a very solid and consistent production, which, you know, is appreciated. And, you, you know, you want that in a first episode, but let's be honest, we don't always get that with some shows. Absolutely. And now before I get to my negatives, uh, Mark, did you want to share any of your positives for this episode? Well, I think kind of piggybacking off we said earlier, strong, fun voice acting and portrayal of characters all across the board. Luz could have easily come across as very annoying or not genuine 
in her eccentricity and she didn't she came i believe that this is a real person and a real character also you know like we said uh ida is also great king is great the warden actually was a lot of fun and you uh had mentioned uh his ability kind of reminded you of an old star wars character that's no longer canon but kind of uh just kind of having a tendril muscly vibe to him oh yeah no oh he's no longer canon i thought he was i don't think he is anymore because it was in the old clone wars show Anyway, Star Wars fans, I'm pretty much talking about this one bounty hunter I saw on like a lore video on YouTube where the guy is nothing but like nerves and muscles. And if you chop off his limbs, he can regrow it. And he's been pretty much around for thousands of years because he can keep regrowing. Yeah, he pretty much reminded me of that character, the warden. I will say, though, solid humor kind of in vain of Gravity Falls, not quite as tight, especially for a first episode. There's no jokes that had me going, you know, rolling my eyes, but I do think they could have pulled back a slight bit. But otherwise, there's a very fun joke involving giraffes and, you know, getting old and stuff that I think a lot of people of all ages will enjoy. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that there. Now to get some of my uh, negatives out of the way, which are mostly just nitpicks, but the whole premise of the show is supposed to be about weird and fantasy type things and i know the production behind this is that it was drawing inspirations from many other things as mark has told me however in my experience watching a lot of cartoons over the years i really feel like they could have pushed the weirdness more when i saw the world the boiling aisles and all that i got a lot of disenchantment slash adventure time vibes from everything and while some of the creature designs and all that stuff kind of remind me of the Salvador Dali guy. And yes, that's a stretch. I don't think he was technically known for that. But artists in that vein really reminded me of that. However, like I said, the whole thing is supposed to be weird and a little grotesque. And maybe I was expecting like flapjack level of like weirdness and gratuity. But ultimately, my negative to came down to is like, I really wish they pushed it a little bit more. Everything kind of felt subdue, not as like over the top as it could have been. But it, it's an animated television show for kids targeting like young teens, maybe older kids. So really they can't go too far, I suppose. But that's really my only big negative there. Yeah, no, I could see that. I think I'd like to see it get weirder as the sh series goes on, especially since this is the first episode. We can't cram too much, but I am interested and do hope it gets a little weirder myself. And the only other thing that I could bring up, which is, again, not really a major flaw with the show itself, but kind of like a conversation we could have in the future or just in general i was thinking about the whole premise behind the show is Luz is an outcast she does a lot of strange things and comes up with crazy stories yet is forced to go to a camp to like become more grounded and not use her imagination as much and i feel like the whole premise is a little dated not in like a controversial way but it really made me think back of some of the conversations that i've heard on podcasts and stuff where back then like nerd culture like say maybe like 20 years ago maybe longer it was kind of frowned upon if like you're an adult and you like nerdy fantasy stuff but because of like how inclusive everything has become nowadays thanks to the internet conventions and things like that if you're an adult into like lord of the rings harry potter or some other form of like fantasy type stuff it's become pretty acceptable almost endearing to be into such things and there's a lot of figureheads out there who give way to people saying like hey if you like marvel comics or if you like thrillers or whatever it's like if you just like something you should embrace it and i feel like that's the kind of world we're kind of in right now it, i might just be in my bubble mark i have no idea but i feel like this show could have done would have really fit well or really had a would okay i'm premature in here this show definitely feels like something that could have been something really big if it came out like maybe 10 years maybe 15 years ago i can see that i know it just premiered there's still more episodes to come but i don't know if the weight of its premise will have as much as an impact as it could have if it came out sooner but it still looks promising it still looks charming and i'm sure we'll get a lot more cool characters and ideas and lessons later on down the road it seems like this is a very well thought out production mm -hmm. and i think that's certainly one of its biggest things especially with some other stuff we've seen coming from uh and the animation community lately this feels thought out and that is the best thing like that's the biggest compliment i can give it and even though it sounds like it's not 
this just feels like a thought out production so far right out the gate. Overall, I say I was generally entertained by this episode and I do look forward to seeing more episodes to come. I saw this on YouTube, so unfortunately, I don't know if the second episode will premiere on YouTube or not. According to Google here, it comes out January 17th. So I'll do my best to catch it as soon as I can. And otherwise, I might just have to look at the Disney Channel app or something because I wish it premiered on Disney+. Plus. I really do, but I don't think it will. But I mean, if we just had it like, okay, it's going to premiere on Disney Channel because business and rating purposes. But like if the next day or even like an hour later it was on Disney+, Plus, that'd be great. That would be fantastic. I would love that. I think that's something we all kind of want moving forward. Like, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty... I think like Disney Channel's ratings dropped drastically after the launch of Disney Plus. So that's a conversation for another day. That is, that is a whole other can of worms. But for now, I say I was entertained. What say you, Mark? I say I'm entertained. I'm looking forward to more. And yeah, a good time to be a fan of television animation, especially if you're coming from the Disney camp. And that'll do it for our season one, episode one review for The Owl House. You heard our opinion, but now we want to hear yours. Let us know in the comments section below. Have you seen the first episode and did you like it? Did you not like it? Share your thoughts. Join the conversation. If you like reviews just like this, be sure to subscribe to my podcast channel and ring that bell to be notified when new videos drop. Like this video, and if you want to support me directly, please consider going to my Patreon. Donating as little as a dollar a month will help go towards my podcast channel, art, animation, and content made just for you. Links in the description below. This is Matt Sella. This is Mark. And we want to thank you all for tuning in.